want us to look this morning at the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter, verse 35. It just kind of beautifully segues into what we have just uh, given our praise to our Heavenly Father. So if you would, please let us uh, offer this liturgy to God for you. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Amen. Amen. Church, let us go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come this day, we come to worship this day, hungry. Oh yes, hungry for the bread. Hungry to uh, fill our stomachs. Hungry for the Holy Spirit. Hungry for the bread that biblically points to you, O God. The bread of life that we know in Jesus Christ. It's also known, O God, that there is bread in this world that keeps us hungry. And for that bread, O God, we know that it is not lasting, it's not eternal, but that you, O God, God eternal, God Almighty, will give us the bread that will last through the ages. It is the bread, O God, that fed the Israelite people in their desert journey. It's that very bread that those early believers shared underground as a way of remembering what their Lord and Savior did on the cross at Calvary. It's that bread that we share this day that is lasting and eternal. That's our need, O God, for You in Jesus Christ. So we come hungry this day. We come hungry for You. So fill our hearts, fill our stomachs, fill our hungry souls this day with Your bread, the bread of life. We also pray for those that are literally starving for bread around the world. We lift them up in prayer. O God, we pray a divine dome over them. O God, we pray that the bread of life will be fed to them. That they will have hope. That they will have assurance in knowing that this life is not dark and dismal. But there is always something to live for, to speak about, and to celebrate. And that is the community of faith known as the Church of Jesus Christ. May the, may the Christ that is in me be in you, that together, as the body of Jesus Christ, we can be that one body that one bread for a hungry world. Bless us this day, O God, as we turn our hearts to You. And we ask all of this in the power of the One who is the bread of life, Jesus Christ, who gave us the Lord's Prayer, praying together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Church, I am turning now to the prophet Isaiah, the 55th chapter of Isaiah. Verses 1 through 8. Here before us is an invitation to the hungry and the thirsty. Hear now these words Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money? on what is not bread, and your labor on what does not satisfy. 
Listen. Listen to me and eat what is good, and your soul will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me. Hear me that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations that do not know you will hasten to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for He has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call on Him while He is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For your thoughts, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. So, church, uh, growing up, uh, my uh, my grandmother uh, gave me a, a, a blue suitcase. It was a tiny blue suitcase, uh, and and on that blue suitcase were the words uh, "Going to Grandma's." Going to Grandma's. I still have uh, that blue suitcase. Now, here's the thing that you need to know about that suitcase. It, it was big enough for a, a pair of socks, literally, and maybe a toothbrush. Okay, so. Uh, I, I would, I would, of course, pack that bag uh, and go, go to Grandma's, okay, for for the weekend. Uh, and and here's here's what I distinctly remember uh, about about those uh, visits to to Grandma's. I, I remember one thing, uh, and and it was this that you would have to uh, climb up a a set of stairs to get. Uh, to my mother's home, or to my grandmother's home. So climbing, climbing up those stairs, I remember, okay? And when I would get to the uh, door there, the entrance door, I would open it up, and two things would happen. One was my grandmother saying, are you hungry? Are you hungry? As, as grandmothers beautifully do for their grandchildren, are you hungry? And the second thing that I distinctly remember is the smell of raisin bread. Now, just take that smell in for a moment. It just has a good aroma, raisin bread does. It was baking in the oven. Okay? Now, here's the thing about that raisin bread, though. That was for breakfast. Okay? So you had to wait the next morning to eat that delicious raisin bread. Now, my grandmother's home had thin walls, and it was a small home, which meant this, that the guest room, okay, you, you, you know how smells can linger in rooms, okay? Good smells and bad smells, I guess, can linger in rooms, right? So, but because the house was small and the thin walls were there, that smell, that aroma of the raisin bread would linger in that guest room. So I had to smell that raisin bread smell all night, all night, and think about that raisin bread all night. So the next morning, that bread would be in the warmer, and then my grandmother would cut it, and then she would butter it, and then we would eat it. It was a blessed moment, and it was oh so good. Am I making you hungry by any chance? Am I making you hungry? So, so church, I, I want to I wanna ask you this morning, what do you hunger for? What do you hunger for? The prophet Isaiah speaks to that. He speaks to a spiritual hunger this morning. He says, the prophet does, listen, listen to me and eat what is good. Did you notice it, it wasn't a suggestion, but in fact, a direct command. Listen. 
listen to me and eat what is good. Now, here's the thing that we need to know. Isaiah's audience, the people that he was speaking to, were the exiled Israelites. And they were literally a hungry people for the food that Isaiah was talking about, for the food that the Israelite people were most connected to was bread. Manna, in fact. Now get this, doing a little bit of research, the word bread in Scripture is used at least 492 times. Can you believe that? 492 times the word bread is used. Bread, otherwise known as manna, was just part of the diet for the Israelite people. It was used in worship. It was used in the temple. Bread was also used and shared as a, as a sign of showing hospitality to one's neighbor in Scripture. So here's what I want us to know about bread, church. That bread for the Israelite people, for the Christian people, for people of faith, it builds a connection, you see? When we have bread, when we break bread, it's a way that we are building a connection with one another, okay? I, I, I know that, that a, a, a common way in which we uh, might invite one another uh, to, to lunch or to supper is to say, hey, why don't you come over and we'll break bread together, a way of fellowshipping one, with one another, a way of building a connection. While we are building a connection as we are breaking bread together, guess what? We're also building a connection with God Almighty. As a way of saying, as we break this bread together, I see the Christ in you and you see the Christ in me. There's a commonality there. But also with this bread, uh, uh, of the breaking of the bread, we realize something spiritually speaking, that we are all equals together under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, that we come literally, spiritually hungry for this bread so that we can feed our hungry souls. But I do want to put a word of caution out there to you. And the word that, that comes to mind is beware of becoming enchanted with the bread of the world. Lots of bread in this world. Here's the thing about the bread of the world. It can very easily leave you hungry, wanting more. Consuming that bread of the world will only make you hungrier. And eventually, I believe, it will leave you on empty. So I want you to think about something about this bread of the world, being enchanted by the bread of the world. And I will leave it to your imagination, how you define the bread of the world. Part of what World Communion Sunday means this day is that we, if we are consuming the bread of the world this day, and we know that it continues to make us hungrier and hungrier and will literally leave us on empty, a part of this communion ritual is to say, Lord, God Almighty, I want to come to you in prayer this day. And I want to confess that I am absolutely powerless to the bread of the world that I am consuming. That it is leaving me hungrier and hungrier each day. I want to bring that before you this day, O oh God. I want to repent of it, O oh God. And I want to put it aside. I also want to ask for the grace of God Almighty. Because God, our God, is a God 
of grace, a God of mercy, a God of second chances. So in and as a part of this confession, we ask God Almighty for the grace to reconcile us, to reconcile our relationship with Him, and to give us the strength and the endurance to make the bread of life the spiritual sustenance that will fill us with what we need to get ourselves right again. The grace to do that. Because church, we cannot do it on our own. We cannot do it by ourselves. So what is it this day, church, that you hunger for? Is it an opportunity to have a second chance? Is it an opportunity to heal a broken relationship, maybe? Is it an opportunity to heal some kind of brokenness from within? I'll invite you to put some serious thought and prayer to that this day as we come before the Lord's table. You see, World Communion Sunday, we as Methodists are certainly in the spiritual habit of celebrating the sacrament monthly, the first of every month. The, the reason why this day, uh, the first of October, is kind of set apart and made holy is that not just Methodists, but Christians around the world, around the globe, gather this day and have communion to recognize several things. That God Almighty is the bread of life who is our source and our power and the love that we know in Jesus Christ. And we recognize in this holy meal this day as global Christians Christ's betrayal. We also recognize His sacrificial love. And that's the love that is powerful enough to wipe away any sin that might be eating away at us. It is that same sacrificial love that we all know that gives us an opportunity for that second chance or redemption or reconciliation in our lives. So let us remember that this day, that as we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion, what we're realizing is that in this bread, the bread of life, we will find wholeness and healing. That we are called as people of faith to always seek the bread of life and not the bread of the world, because it will only, the bread of the world, leave us hungering for more. Also, when we celebrate the sacrament and we break bread together, we experience something that the world cannot give us. But it's only in the church that when we break this bread, when we share it, when we literally take it into our bodies, we experience this thing called grace, which is the sacrificial love of Jesus Christ, which means there's no strings attached to what we're taking in. It's a free gift that has been given. Bless you. And then lastly, as the body of Jesus Christ, as believers, we share this bread. We share it literally by what we are doing here at, all, at our altar, but it's also a way in which you and I can share our witness as the body of Christ, offering the bread of life, our faith to the world, until all church are fed. And we do it always to, to God's glory. And in Jesus' name. So let me pray for us this day. Heavenly Father, the bread of the world. Oh, it's so tempting. 
but it can so get us off the righteous path. Oh God, our confession this day is that oftentimes we become powerless to the things of this world. So we come to you this day, this World Communion Sunday, to offer our thanks, to confess our sins, so that we can journey down every day that most righteous path that leads to Jesus Christ. And we this day will celebrate and recognize that love and that most righteous way in the breaking of the bread and in the giving of the cup. For it's our Lord and Savior that gives us hope, that offers us forgiveness, and whose blood was shed so that we might be a redeemed people. Glory, hallelujah, for that gift. We ask it in Jesus' holy name. Amen.